Hi you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I thought I would share with you all the story of our second child um, who would have been 10 years old today. His name was Oliver. I don't know why I thought I could do this and not cry. Um, so, I'm just going to start with his story. I've been wanting to do this for four or five years. I just haven't had the courage to do it because it brings me back to that day every time April comes around. But okay, I'm gonna pull myself together. So um, at the time we were living with um, my parents and uh, we already had Blake. And in November of 2009, we found out that we were pregnant with our second child. Um, we were pretty nervous because that wasn't in our plan. And again, we were living with my parents. But um, anyways, we were excited and we were trying to buy a home at the time. So it was all right. Um, so as time went on, um, we were just waiting to find out what the sex of our baby was. So we were just doing our normal routine um, appointments at that time. And um, at 16 or 17 weeks gestation, I believe that's when they do um, blood work. Just to make sure everything's developing okay and as it should. And um, so in February of 2010, I think I was 17 weeks because I was really excited to find out the sex of the baby at 18 weeks. So um, anyways, we go in for our blood work and on a Friday, I get a phone call um, from my doctor saying that the blood work on our baby came back positive for Down syndrome. Um, and that I had to cancel my appointment the following week with them and they had to refer me to a specialty um, doctor's office that deal, dealt with special needs pregnancies. Um, so that so I cried at first, but I'm like, no, I can do this. You know, it wasn't even a question. I was just happy that he was okay, or he or she at the time was okay, and I would get through this. So um, my mom was there by my side, and I just instantly, I called my husband too, right away, and let him know, and um, to let him know. And um, anyways, I, I just started researching on Down syndrome. I started learning all of the ins and outs of it, um, you know, as far as the f everything I could possibly read or watch or learn about it. That's what my husband spent, my husband and I spent doing that entire weekend. So the specialty um, doctors, we had an appointment with them. I believe it was either Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. Um, just that. So we had the weekend to sit on this, that our baby came back positive for Down syndrome. So my mom and dad come with us to the appointment that following Monday or Tuesday. And um, anyways, the ultrasound tech came in and did the regular ultrasound. We heard the heartbeat and she told us that we were having a little boy. And, um, and then she said, 
that she couldn't confirm anything because obviously we asked about Down syndrome and she said that we were going, she was going to take all the measurements and everything and that we were going to meet with the specialist. So we waited in the waiting room again and then they called us back. And so all four of us, my mom, my dad, my husband and I were sitting there and the doctor instantly starts going into how our baby does not have Down syndrome. Our baby has what's called cystic hygroma and a very severe case of high drops throughout his body. And while she's telling us all of this, we have no clue what cystic hygroma is. We have no clue what high drops is. And we are all just sitting there silently, silent, but sobbing because in the middle of telling us about cystic hygroma and high drops, she tells us that our baby only has a 2% chance of surviving. And then she goes to tell us that if he does survive, he would only live for a few minutes, maybe a few hours at the most. And then we go into another office with another doctor to go over what our options are at this point. And they tell us we have one week to decide if we're gonna terminate the pregnancy. So I just found out that my baby has cystic hygroma, which is a large sack of fluid de de that had developed on the back of his neck. And that he has high drops, stage four high drops, which is fluid, internal fluid around all of his major organs and then underneath his skin throughout his entire body. It was so heartbreaking. But like terminating the pregnancy wasn't even an option. I'm like, it's out of our hands. We just have to rely on God and have blind faith at this point. So anyways, the next few weeks were horrible, horrible. I spent my time looking up everything there was to know about high drops and cystic hygroma. And if there was any miracles out there. And um, I had found out that there weren't many. I don't think I found any with his exact condition as far as the, the level of cystic hygroma and the level of high drops he was at. But, um, anyway, so every week we had, but we had either an ultrasound or a meeting with another specialist or doing testing, blood work. Um, it was, it was crazy. Um, I went through two neonatals. We did all the DNA testing and everything was coming back negative. So we had no answers, no answers as to how or why this happened. He just happened to be one in so many that this happens to statistically. So anyways, that's what I spent my days doing. Um, and then Let's see, we met with one specialist in Scottsdale 
um, who had told us he had never seen a baby this severe with these two conditions survive as long as Oliver had been surviving. Each one week we'd get a little better, the next week we'd crash. It was up and down, up and down, up until um, February, it was around February 12th, I think, 10th or 12th, not February, April, April 10th or 12th, somewhere in there, maybe the 14th. Um, they told me that he would continue to swell and my body, it wasn't producing any amniotic fluid so that basically eventually he would stop moving and that I just needed to play, pay close attention. Um, well, because he was so tiny anyways, there was hardly any movement when, even when there was movement. So I was constantly terrified. Um, my son, Blake, he, he knew something was wrong. I think he knew the entire time. Um, he would talk to my tummy, talk to his brother, kiss my tummy. He would play with my tummy. He would rub my tummy. He would hug it and rub his nose on it. And say good morning, baby brother, and good night, baby brother, and I love you, baby brother. And I had just never seen a child interact with A mommy's tummy like like Blake was doing so I think he knew that I needed extra love and support um, whenever I would sit he would just come and lay and and listen lay and listen but he would put stickers all over my tummy and I was never a mom to take pregnancy pictures with Blake. I have maybe one or two and then uh, with Oliver, I was so depressed and so down that I couldn't even think that way. So, I knew the further along, along I got, I had my camera and I was able to snap these quick pictures of Blake. Because that was every day, all day long. Um, anyways, and then one day, my mom and I were driving in the car. We were going to Costco or something. And Blake was strapped in a seat in the back. And my mom had known, like, I would tell her I didn't feel him today. And then two days went by and I said, I haven't felt him again at all. So that week I had, I had, called and canceled my weekly doctor's appointment because I didn't want to know if he was gone or not. I wasn't ready. So I canceled it. But the crazy thing was is I, I think I knew because Blake completely stopped talking to baby brother he wouldn't say good morning he wouldn't kiss my tummy he wouldn't rub my tummy it completely stopped and I would ask him to and he would tell me no so anyways after 
two or three days of this, we were in the car going to Costco or something. My mom asked, have you felt him yet? I said, no, I think it's been four days at this point. I said, no, it's been four days. And her and I were sitting there just silently. And then all of a sudden, Blake looks out the window. And he says, bye-bye, baby brother. Bye-bye. At that point, I knew, I knew that he was gone. I had an appointment that following week on the 28th of April for an ultrasound. So we decided to take Blake with us um, for the first time, my mom and my grandma. We're in the car, and then my dad and Blake, not my dad, my husband and Blake drove in a separate car just in case Blake had a tantrum or something in the office. But anyway, so we went into our ultrasound and there was no heartbeat, there was no movement, and then he had passed away that it was time to go to the hospital. I was seven months pregnant. Um, anyways. So that is his story. I had to go home, I had to shower, I had to pack my bag. My mom was calling all of our family. My sisters and brother-in-laws were really supportive throughout the entire thing. Oh, they all dropped what they were doing and went right to the hospital to be with me. Then at 1.30 in the morning, I delivered Oliver. And I believe everyone was in the room. I was waiting for an epidural. And they told me not to push. And I literally, I had one bad contraction and he was held up, he couldn't get there. And the second one, he just came right out. The doctor wasn't even there. She was close, she ran in, got to the table. Uh, my mom was there, everyone was in there. But, uh, so from the time he was born, we were with him for about 12 hours before we had to say goodbye. Um, Oliver had, he was three pounds, a pound and a half of that was water. He was 13 and a half inches long and he had red hair. April is hard. And for any mother, any grandma, any sister, any husband who has lost a child knows how horrible it is. And the pain, it never goes away.
um, I'm going to show you some pictures. I just had to keep telling myself that it was better because he was so sick. He had other plans for Oliver. But here's a picture. My sister Ginger demanded on taking pictures and I was so upset at the time but she said I promise you'll you'll be glad to have all of these and I'm so glad I'm so glad every year I bring them out um, so I'm gonna show you his picture he was really sick he was very swollen, very dark, because again, I think he had passed away a week prior, but I was too scared. I didn't, I couldn't do it at that time. But, um, we never even saw his eyes because he was so swollen. The skin on his forehead covered his eyes. So, after spending 12 hours holding him with my family and everything, the hospital, I had no idea what to expect. But, um, they did a few things that I had no idea they were going to do, which they put together this box and we call it Oliver's box. But um, they took him and took photos of him. They made a little scrapbook with him. They took his footprints. They clipped a piece of his hair for me to keep. It was amazing beautiful so we got to leave with our box we got his clothes that he was wearing and everything this um was his ankle bracelet it just slid right over his entire foot that's how tiny 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 it was but um anyways so I'm gonna show you the display my mom and sisters and brother-in-law helped put together for me um, This is a bear that was given to Oliver and my kids take turns uh, sleeping with it. So he's pretty ragged. He's been through the wash, but it's special for them. Huh? So this here, I'm gonna put my knee up so I can, uh, there. So this here, they did his, um, hand and footprints. This is a piece of his hair. It's a little card with his information. This is the gown he was wearing. And just so you know, his head was only half the size of this hat. The rest was fluid. Um, and he was literally, his head was right here and his feet barely hung out of his his gown and those are the size of his feet it's the size of my 
them. And then I had made this blanket for him. And, um, and then they put a tape measure here. It said, Mom and Dad, I grew to 13 and a half inches. So, this was really hard to do. Um, so, I have this hanging in my living room. And then this is a picture of my husband and I holding him when he came back from his photo shoot. They brought him in a tiny basket. And it was just so cute. So we got to hold him in that and pass him around in that as well. Okay, so, um, turns out that the, the hole in my heart it's turned into my greatest blessing. Um, my husband and I, our relationship is so much stronger because of what we went through together. And um, I'd do it all over again. So, my kids to this day, it's so cute because Livy and Blake, they talk about him quite often, all the time. And Livy talks as if she knew him. It's really special. But, um, so every year on his birthday, we I take the kids and we go get balloons. We go get um, flowers. And Blake, from the time he was little, would pick him out dinosaurs and cars for his graveside. So every year on his birthday, we do that. And we either get pizza or donuts, depending on if we go for breakfast or go for dinner. But, um, it took me a long time to come out of depression. Um, in fact, it took medication to help me. Um, because when you go through something like that, it made me not even want to get up in the mornings. But, um, anyways, I got through it. Been taking medication and, um, have been taking it ever since because it truly helps me. And honestly, I'm just scared to go off of it because. I don't want to, I don't want to be sad and depressed. I need to be a mom for Blake and Livy. I need to be here for them because they are my world. And um, anyways, this just turned into a crying mess. I don't know what I was thinking, thinking I could do it without crying, but um, Anyways, I just thought because it was 10 years ago that it would be nice to finally share his story and our story because he is what makes us who we are today. And uh, I just think as horrible as it was to go through how amazing he's made all of us to, and who we are today. I don't think we would be the same without having gone through this experience and this trial. I will forever be his mom. 
and um, for a long time I I didn't care if I lived or died because I knew I had a baby in heaven waiting for me and it was about two years ago so we're talking eight years of not caring whether I lived or died that I realized that I don't want to die. I need to be here for my husband and my two kids. So even though as that time goes on, it doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make me, I, I don't know. It just, we relive it every year around this time so anyways i am just so grateful for everything that i have today and for who me and my husband and my kids are today because i truly feel like we are better people because of oliver and what we went through with him so Anyways, I thank you guys so much for watching and my next video um, <laughs> will be completely different. Back to the norm. But, um, anyways, take care you guys. Bye.